All right, guys, in today's video, we have a lot of info to go over and talk about. Starting with Spider-Man Miles Morales, we have some new information as well as a new screenshot about this upcoming PlayStation 5 exclusive. We're also talking about Bloodborne and how another rumor has popped up claiming that it will be coming to PlayStation 5 and PC. And if the rumor is to be believed, it sounds like Sony is trying to have this game out at or around the launch of the PlayStation 5. We're also talking about the DualSense controller, more specifically the battery capacity and how it's close to being 50% uh, better, which is great. So that means we can expect much better battery life from the PlayStation 5 controller. Finally, we're talking about Ghost of Tsushima, apparently having the most impressive Metacritic user score of the entire generation, which is just insane to think about. So this is what we're going over. If you could do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon to help the channel out and show your support. Starting here with Spider-Man Miles Morales though, they released a new screenshot today, which looks awesome in my opinion, and it does look pretty next gen. Um, certainly uh, something that looks like a big improvement over what we've seen with the PlayStation 4 Pro. And I'm looking at this image in 4K, the detail on Miles Morales' suit here is looking really good. The lighting is looking really good. It looks like they have kind of a blur effect going on in the background to kind of symbolize or signify that, you know, there's a storm, it's the middle of winter, it's windy. Uh, but you look at the puddles specifically, I'm sure many of you remember the whole puddle gate thing with Spider-Man PS4. How could anybody forget where a bunch of clowns were claiming that there was some kind of major downgrade. Even at that time when I was much more into Xbox than I was PlayStation, even I thought that was just like, you gotta be kidding me. It was the beginning of the end for me over on Xbox because of the way people were acting with this. But you look at these puddles and they look very, very impressive. You can tell they are ray traced. You have to imagine Insomniac was like, yup, we're gonna show this image. The one where there's a puddle right in front of Spider-Man Miles Morales to let everybody know that our puddles look great. So yeah, I think the screenshot looks really cool. I honestly can't wait to see more of this game. I cannot wait to see gameplay. I wanna see it in action. I'm sure that'll be coming later, but we have a, a few small details here that were revealed in this exclusive article. Uh, it says here that it sounds like Peter Parker will actually show up to train together with Miles. This doesn't make, I mean, I don't think they straight up confirmed that, but they heavily implied that that's something we can expect. They go on to say Miles is his own Spider-Man with his own animations, movements, and abilities, including Bioshock and invisibility. Also, I think that's important for them to be saying because there's already a lot of people who are looking at this like it's just, you know, um, rushed DLC, which it's absolutely not. I think it's very clear that it's not that. And they would assume that when you play Spider-Man Miles Morales, he's going to feel just the same way that Peter Parker does when you're playing Spider-Man PS4, but that's not going to be the case at all. He's his own character and he's going to have a completely different feel to him. And finally, I think one of the developers uh, over at Insomniac is reiterating that this is in fact a complete story. It may be a shorter story than the one that was told in Spider-Man PS4, but they are you know, really driving home the point that this is a complete story arc for Miles Morales and it's going to have a lot of heart. It's going to have a lot of emotional impact. It's not going to just be something that's just, you know, very obviously quickly produced and it just doesn't have any substance to it. It's not going to be that at all. So yeah, that's all the information we have about Spider-Man Miles Morales. Again, can't wait to hear more about it. I can't wait to see gameplay, but moving on and talking about Bloodborne, says here, sources familiar with the matter have told a YouTuber that the PC port of Bloodborne is nearly done. The PlayStation 5 is billed to get a Bloodborne uh, remaster as well. And we can expect to find out more about it at one of Sony's events later this year. Now, what's interesting to me about this is we have been hearing about another secret launch exclusive, which I have been saying that I really, really hope it's SOCOM. You know, we've been hearing that Guerrilla Games, they have a second team working on a, on a FPS or third person game. It's a shooter. And I've been saying maybe this will be SOCOM. Now, I'm not saying that if this Bloodborne rumor is true that SOCOM doesn't exist, it could very well still exist or a new kill zone, perhaps. But it seems more likely that if this Bloodborne rumor is true, this is the second uh, la secret launch title or not second secret launch title, but the secret launch title that Sony has been saving as kind of a surprise. 
Uh, I think it would be a little bit underwhelming because to be completely honest with you, I think there's a lot of people who if, you know, Bloodborne were to come to PS5, they would expect a free update not to be charged again. So I don't know if Sony's maybe on the fence with that one, but apparently it will be coming to PC. Anyway, it says several PlayStation 4 exclusives such as Horizon Zero Dawn and Detroit Become Human have made their way to PC over the past year. However, many classics continue to remain exclusive to the platform. Uh, Bloodborne obviously being one of them. Sources familiar with the matter told a YouTube content creator that Bloodborne has gone through several several excuse me rounds of testing on PC. A lot of kinks have been ironed out, but the frame rate will reportedly be capped at 60 FPS due to instability. Uh, I think that's not a surprise. That's what I would expect on PlayStation 5. I think for PC though, some people might not like that, although I think 60 is fine. Sony will release a remastered version of Bloodborne on the PlayStation 5 as well. It will be the second Soulsborne game to receive a fresh coat of paint alongside Demon Souls. Uh, Sony is expected to unveil the game at its State of Play event. Well, we don't know if this next event is going to be a State of Play, but we know there will be an event of some sort. Both the PlayStation 5 and PC version will reportedly be available for purchase later this year, as is the case with every leak. Um, I think this comes from PC Gaming Inquisition. Now, I don't know how true this is, but I've heard multiple people uh, who you know claim to have some type of inside track or inside source saying that this is a real thing that Sony is doing. And frankly, I do believe it because it makes sense. We know that Sony is becoming much more comfortable with putting their games on the PC, especially older games. Bloodborne, in my opinion, is one of these games that just makes perfect sense. The only thing is with the PlayStation 5 port, I really don't know how people are going to respond to this. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. If Sony charges for it, I don't I don't see myself not buying it. I certainly do see myself buying it because I loved Bloodborne and I would definitely play it again on play PlayStation 5 with all those upgrades. However, I think I would have a major problem if they char tried charging $60. Uh, I think that that would be a huge mistake and it would get a lot of backlash. If they charge maybe like 20 or 30, maybe even 40, I can admit I would buy into that. But I can also understand why if this is true, a lot of people would just be scratching their heads saying, how is this not a free upgrade? It should absolutely be a free upgrade. And I, I just feel that in order for them to justify charging for it again, they would have to do a lot to it. So... I think it'll really just come down to, you know, is it just a higher resolution with a higher frame rate? Because if that's the case, I don't think that's going to go over very well with a lot of people. But if there's a lot more done to it that obviously required much more work and effort, then I could see why they would charge. But yeah, I think this could end up being that secret launch title that we've been hearing about that Sony has been holding on to. And I'm going to be interested to see what you guys have to say. I can only suspect, honestly, that it would be a little bit underwhelming for a lot of people or maybe really underwhelming considering all the rumors we've been hearing of Silent Hill SOCOM. Again, if this is true, that doesn't mean those games don't exist. It just means they're not going to be there at around the launch of the PlayStation 5. I mean, we already have Spider-Man Miles Morales. I can't imagine Sony wants to release many AAA titles to kind of get in the way of that, but... Moving right along here, talking about the DualSense controller, uh, photos have emerged online, which originate from a Twitter user who claims to work for an accessories company, and he claims to show the DualSense controller and a label flagging a battery capacity of 1,560 milliamps. PlayStation 4's uh, DualShock 4 has a battery capacity of 1,000 milliamps. I think when it first launched, yeah, it says here it originally launched with 800 milliamps. Uh, however, the PS5's controller features a number of, of new features such as haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, which could potentially negate the extra capacity. So, yeah, this is a tough situation where it's great to hear that the battery capacity is significantly higher, but there are all of these new features that I don't know if you can turn them on or off. I'm assuming you can to save battery life. Um, and that might be something a lot of people do it's really difficult to say like will you get those extra three to four hours on top of what you already get with the dualshock 4 with all of those features enabled we really just don't know we're gonna have to wait until the controller is actually out and people can test it and confirm it for us but i'm going to assume that even with all of the features enabled you're gonna get at least a little bit longer maybe an extra hour or two potentially which is still good but if you turn the features off maybe then you're gonna really you know see the battery life 
extended greatly. So just wanted to take a minute here to let you guys know about that. And this, this does seem legitimate. The person has a bunch of photos and they look pretty real to me. So yeah, finally, we're going to end this video talking about Ghost of Tsushima and how apparently it is currently the highest rated Metacritic user score of the console generation. The game currently has a 9.3 user score on Metacritic, a score that even most universally praised blockbusters are, uh, would struggle to obtain based on some data crunching by Forbes. Ghost of Tsushima is actually one of the highest rated titles of the entire console generation and the only game that comes close the only games that come close are ones that don't have anywhere near as many user scores uh, apparently ghost of tsushima is sitting at a whopping 15,192 user ratings so the fact that it can remain at that 9.3 with that many ratings is absolutely insane and I am still playing Ghost of Tsushima. I know I haven't been talking about it much, but anybody who watches Press X podcast, you'll see the gameplay footage in the background. I'm just taking my time with it. It's one of those games where I'm not trying to rush it. And I just want to make sure that when I sit down to play it, I can get fully into it and feel immersed and really get into the world. But I have really enjoyed what I've played so far. And I can certainly understand why it's sitting at a 9.3 user score. It's not a perfect game, but really no games are perfect but it does a lot of things right does a lot of things really well and the world is just very impressive so i'm just very happy to see uh, all of the success that a game like ghost of tsushima is finding considering it's a new ip and you can tell a lot of heart went into it you can tell a lot of effort went into it a lot of passion and i think that really shines through and uh, even though it does have an 83 as a regular Metacritic score, that's still solid, right? Especially for a new IP, but you can tell that people are really loving this game. So just wanted to let you guys know about that. The game is selling really well. People are loving it. So it will be interesting to see what, uh, what Sucker Punch does next. But that's going to do it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, again, leave it a like. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.